Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, I've got five recipes for you for your landscape photos. Uh, these are things that you can use on basically any of your landscape photos to get a certain kind of look or just give it that finishing touch to, uh, to, you know, to take it one notch up, just make it that much better. I wanna run them down here, uh, one through five. Let, let's just dive right in. This first one, uh, let's call it the natural glow. Glow looks are popular with landscapes. It gives it a dreamier feel. We've got a couple of different types of glow filters. You know, sunshine, there's there's glow. I'm gonna use glow here and uh, let me just pick normal. And so we can see it's get this, uh, you know, this, this kind of very dreamy feel. And there are a lot more that are even stronger. The thing I want you to do, you've got your glow, you've got an amount that you're happy with. Open up your masking and click the luminosity button. Why? This gives it a natural glow because in nature, bright things glow, dark things don't, and that's what the luminosity mask is going to give you. Right? Without the luminosity mask, the dark trees are glowing and, and so forth. It's an interesting feel, but if you're looking for a natural, real, you know, real, just real world look to it, hit that luminosity button. You need a little more in the shadows? No problem. Take the density down you can start to introduce it back in. You'll see it all the way come in, comes back up. That is how you can get a natural glow. Glow filter plus a luminosity mask. All right, let's get on to recipe number two. Uh, I'll call this one you know, the, the, the color pop. And it's interesting because we're going to use a black and white filter to do it. So we'll add a black and white filter. And you know, black and white for color, really? We're, we're gonna get there. Uh, color response, the conversion area, we're gonna turn the auto thing on and play around with the different sliders. We're increasing or decreasing the luminance values of the certain color ranges, trying to make this the strongest black and white photo it can be. We also have tone in the tone area. We can add contrast. Uh, I can increase overall brightness. We'll leave that alone. You know, but highlights can get a little brighter. Shadows can get a little darker. We're doing all these things to make this a strong black and white photo. So where's the color fit in? changing the blending mode. So we'll open up our blending options and change it from normal to luminosity. And what did that do for the photo before, after? It's, it's just richer, it's deeper, it's got, it really does have more three dimension to it. And what the luminosity blend mode does is say, well, don't change the color tone or, you know, in this case of black and white, don't, don't turn it into a monochrome thing. Just change the luminance values, the brightness or darkness of the different things we adjusted. So the recipe, use your black and white filter, make it a strong black and white image, work visually and then change the blending mode to luminosity. All right, let's move on to another, uh, another recipe. Uh, this one I will call the twilight look and uh, we're gonna use curves to do it. We'll add a curves filter and for a twilight look, you know, twilight has a, a reddish purplish tinge to it uh, with, with hints of blue, right? You think about blue hour or twilight. We're not going to work with the luminance curve. We're gonna work with the color, red, green, blue. Red, Simple thing. Uh, I look at the histogram and I kind of choose something that's in the major part of the histogram. So I'm gonna pull up a little bit. And it's a little, right? It went from 80 to 85. Not much of a change, just a little nudge upward, adding more red into the photo. Green, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna pull down a little bit. I'm adding more magenta. And then blue, I'll add, I'll add blue. Taking away warmth, adding more blue. And to make this more pronounced, so you can really see the effect, I'll push this a little farther than I might normally. So you can see the before and after. And in this kind of scene, it does just take on a more of a, actually it has like a vintage feel. Uh, but if it's too strong, of course, we, we have our opacity there. But this twilight look, it works fantastic for sunrises, sunsets, all sorts of landscapes. And again, it's open up your curves, a little increase on red, a little decrease on green, a little increase on blue. You can save that as a style too, if you wanna just pull it up and, and apply it. If you're gonna do a style, I'd say just take the middle point on the curve and use that to do your up and down adjustments. Recipe number four, an impressionist painting-ish kind of look. Let's dive in. 
For an impressionist, uh, painterly kind of look, we're going to use three filters, some total. Uh, the first is a lens blur. So we'll take lens blur. I generally take the defaults, but we'll lower the opacity to, you know, somewhere in the 20-ish range. I'm watching the photo as I make the adjustment just to soften everything. Everything's a little bit fuzzy, which is what we want for an impressionist, you know, painterly kind of look. Then we'll add a blur and we'll take the blur down and do the same kind of thing, just enough where things get kind of dreamy. And then the third option is to add a glow filter. I tend to like the lighter glow for these. And uh, bonus points, if you want to uh, you know, apply what we did before with Glow, use that luminosity option so that you're getting a more natural looking glow through the entire photo. But now that's got this very painterly kind of feel to it before and after in just three filters. And I did another video about this type of look where you can start to blend in textures and give it some you know, canvas type looks. Have a check out on that one. It'll give you some other ideas. The final recipe I have for you, I'll just call this the photo pop. This is one that is like the last thing you do for any photo after you've done all your styling. It just gives a little bit of an extra you know, oomph to the overall photo. It's a real simple one to add. Let me show you how it works. Since this one is a finishing touch, I'll leave these filters here. And to get this photo pop, add filter. And you can really do this with any of the filters you want. I like to use the color enhancer because by default, the color enhancer has changed nothing. Nothing has changed. I have not adjusted any colors, nor will I adjust any colors. We are not going to touch any of those sliders except opacity. The key is blending. Instead of the normal mode, we're going to choose overlay and take that opacity down to what feels good. And usually for me, that ends up in the 20 ish percent range before and after. It's just this little extra bit. And what the overlay blend mode is really doing is it's blending the sum total of all the filters beneath it with itself. It's like, here's my, here's my finished photo. You know, I, I'm here. I got all these things added. Here's what I've done. I'm finished. Let me take all of this. Imagine blending it with itself on top of one another and it's boosting contrast. So things that were dark get a little darker. Things that were bright get a little brighter and you can control it with the opacity. Key thing is the overlay mode. This is another one you can save as a style. Use it all the time is like the last touch on a, on a photo when I'm, when I'm all done with all the other effects. So there you go, five recipes, quick, simple, easy, a lot of different looks for your landscapes. And you can apply these to virtually any landscape that you have and uh, you know, have fun doing it. You know, these, uh, these things are, are supposed to be fun, supposed to you know, get your photos done, move on to the next one, but get really good results. Hope you found the video helpful. Questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.